good morning students welcome to real analysis lectures in this lecture we'll discuss about lub axiom and its applications so here we'll talk about last class we have seen what is meant by lub of any set a okay least upper bound right now what is meant by an lub axiom so you take a which is any non empty subset of r so a is a non empty subset of r which is bounded above that means it has a upper bound then then there exists an alpha in r which is least upper bound of a so whenever a non empty set is uh, having an upper bound in r then it also has least upper bound in r that is the statement of lub axiom which is not true uh, in every for example uh, instead of r if we take q then this statement is not true that we will see in later lectures okay that's why we can call it this as completeness axiom also right what we will see here is some of the uh, some applications of this lub axiom the first important one is this archimedean property so what archimedean property says is that if x and y are two real numbers with x positive then there exists a natural number n such that nx is greater than y okay so uh, in this place let me recall my teacher how he related this archimedean property to real life problem so how we can analyze suppose why you assume that your real life problem okay you are facing at present in your life okay then this x you call it as the amount of effort you are putting to overcome this problem by then what archimedean property says is that there exist n you can call it suppose number of efforts number of effort how many times you are putting that same effort to overcome that problem right so this says that after certain number of efforts you will definitely overcome your problem only thing is we should be able to put at least a positive effort we should keep doing a little however little it may be depending on how little you are your n may be large and large okay so after 10 times 15 times 20 100 times definitely we can overcome this okay that is the beauty of this archimedean property which says that any real life problem can be overcome with by putting proper efforts okay fine that is about um, <clears throat> this archimedean property how we'll prove this is by with the help of contradiction so suppose assume that there is no such natural number satisfying this condition what is meaning of saying that no n means nx is less than or equal to y for every natural number right okay now if we collect this collection nx as a set a we are collecting this all multiples of x okay then obviously n is a a is a non empty set because x is there okay <clears throat> and by saying this one nx is less than or equal to y we see that this y is an upper bound okay for this set a right so a is non empty set and it has an upper bound in r therefore by this completeness axiom what we can claim that there exists least upper bound for a that you call it as alpha so alpha is a least upper bound for a right so as, as an upper bound of a nx is less than or equal to alpha for every natural number right now what we can observe is that if n is a natural number then n plus 1 is also a natural number that means if this statement is true for every natural number then it is true for n plus 1 also 
Therefore, n plus 1 times x is also less than or equal to alpha for every n belongs to n, right? <coughs> that means nx plus x is less than or equal to alpha. If we take that x this side, what we get here is this nx is less than or equal to alpha minus x for every n belongs to n. Now, if we observe this, this alpha minus x, okay, this alpha minus x now acts as a upper bound for this set A because every element of A is of the form nx and is less than or equal to alpha minus x means what you can conclude is that this alpha minus x is an upper bound of this set A. Okay, So if alpha minus x is an upper bound and we know that alpha is least upper bound, so what should be the relation? That alpha should be less than or equal to alpha minus x. But which is a contradiction because what we know is that alpha minus x is strictly less than alpha whenever x is greater than 0, right? So we are getting a contradiction to this alpha is less than or equal to alpha minus x at one end and the other end alpha minus x is less than alpha. This contradiction arised because of our supposition that there is no n satisfying this condition. Hence, definitely there exists an n satisfying nx greater than 1. So, this is an Archimedean principle or Archimedean property, we can call it. We use this several times, many, many times, okay. So, what we require that among two real numbers, one should be positive. If x is greater than 0, then n times x is greater than y, where y can be any real number, right, fine. We can also say this uh, Archimedean property in another way that n is not bounded above, the set of natural numbers is not bounded above. What is meant by saying that this n is not bounded above is same as saying that it has no upper bound. So that is same as saying that n has no upper bound in R. That is same as saying that no element of, no element x of R is an upper bound. That means if you give any x, it is not an upper bound means what? There exists an n such that n is bigger than x. Okay, fine. Same way you can prove it however we did here. How we will do it? We will prove by contradiction. Suppose n is bounded above. That means there exists an x such that nx is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to x. Just like how you have here nx is less than or equal to y. <laughs> Here how y acted as an upper bound, here this x acts as an upper bound, then apply this uh, uh, completeness axiom or LUB axiom to get least upper bound, call it that as alpha, okay. So alpha is least upper bound of n and uh, that means n is less than or equal to alpha because it is an upper bound. Uh, again by using the fact that if it is true for every n, then it is also true for n plus 1. So n plus 1 is less than or equal to alpha. and we got that alpha minus 1 is an upper bound of n and alpha is least upper bound. So we should get this one, but this is a contradiction because alpha minus 1 we know is strictly less than alpha, right? That is the same as proving that n is not bounded above, okay? In fact, we can prove that if you call it this as one version, Archimedean version 1 and Archimedean version 2, then 1 and 2 are equivalent. That means 1 implies 2 and 2 implies 1. That is uh, very easy. You can go through this. I will skip that. Okay. Now, the other important uh, property which we can call it as density of Q. So, what is meant by density of Q? Why? So, if you take any two real numbers A and B, okay, A and B are real numbers, then uh, of course, suppose so assume that A is less than B then there exists a rational number okay, such that it r is between a and b. So that means between given any two real numbers, we can always find a rational number. So you have huge rich collection of uh, rational numbers. That's, that's why we call it as density, dense, densityness of q. Okay, <clears throat> fine. So how we will prove this is the fact that uh, first, how we will get an idea, then we will go with, to this proof. First, we should get an uh, how we are going to prove this one. 
So we want to find a rational number. So you can denote this by m by n. Okay, satisfying this condition. That means we want m by n should be between a and b. That is same as saying that we want to find an r such that n a is less than m is less than n b. Right? That is same as saying that this m should be in this interval uh, n a comma n b. So you can uh, even call it open interval. Okay. So m is an integer. It, it, it lies in an interval. We we want an integer m which lies in this interval n a comma n b. So we want to find m and n such a way that this m lies should lie in this interval. <clears throat> okay. That means we know that when an interval contains one integer, at least one integer, huh? if the length of that interval is strictly greater than one. Okay. That means if length of this interval n a b minus n b minus n a if it is strictly bigger than 1 then definitely we can guarantee that there exists an integer right and that integer is required over m so that is same as saying this one so somehow we should require this condition and how we that get that condition is by archimedean property okay now we go to the proof so, because a is less than b, so what we get here is that b minus a is greater than 0. Okay. Since a is less than b, b minus a is greater than 0. So, this is your x, which is there in Archimedean principle, okay, our property. So, by Archimedean property, there exists a natural number n such that n times x is greater than y, our y is 1 here. So, what we got here is n times n times b minus a is greater than 1. That is same as n b minus n a is greater than 1. So, we got a natural number n. Now, what is required to get? We should get an m which is an integer that should lie in between this in this interval. Then we are done. Right? So, how we will do that? You take your m as k plus 1 where k is this integer greatest integer less than or equal to that okay and we know that for any x okay this integer value of x is less than or equal to x and x is strictly less than x plus 1 okay now in place of x if we take n a n a is less than n a plus 1 therefore n a plus 1 is same as this is like k plus 1 therefore n a is less than m right so n a is less than m this one part we got okay so keep this in mind Whatever we are doing, we we are here. Now we want to show that that m is also less than n b. Okay. Uh, <coughs> suppose we will prove this by contradiction. Suppose assume that m is greater than or equal to n b, right? Then because m is k plus one, you can write one is equal to m minus k, and m is greater than or equal to n b. So m minus k is greater than or equal to n b minus n a. Why? Because our k is always, which is step uh, um, integer value of this. So this by using this one, what we get is that k is less than or equal to n a. So obviously minus k is greater than or equal to minus n a. Therefore m minus k is bigger than or equal to n b minus n a. Right? That shows that what we got, we got a contradiction. Why? We got a contradiction here. N b minus n a is less than or equal to 1 we got here but whereas by archimedean principle n b minus n a is strictly bigger than 1 okay so that is a contradiction that contradiction arised because we assume that m is greater than or equal to n b so it is not possible therefore m has to be less than n b so n a is less than m is less than n b that shows that a if we take our r as m by n, then that is a rational number which lies between a and b. Okay. So, what is important is that if we take any two real numbers, of course, one is less than the other, then there exists a rational number in between them. Okay. So, that's why rational numbers are. You can call it they are 
there anywhere you take any two real numbers you can see that they exist in between not only rational numbers you can take it as an exercise and work it out that for any two real numbers a and b a less than b there exist an irrational number r minus q means it is irrational such that between a and b you have an irrational so between any two real numbers there is also an irrational number how i can prove i can give an hint here is very it follows from this uh, density of q because a between a and b by previous result there exist a rational number r right what we can do it here is you can uh, instead of taking these two you call it suppose uh, in, by instead of taking a and b you take two another uh, real numbers uh, as a is less than b suppose you multiply by root 2 so root 2 times a is less than root 2 times b this is your new a and this is your new b for these two real numbers by previous result by density what we know is that between these two there exist a rational number right that is same as saying that a is less than r upon root 2 is less than b right but now you can see that this s if we take as r upon root 2 it is an irrational number okay so that proves that if you take any two real real numbers there exist always an irrational number okay and that follows from this density of q which is that between any two rational uh, real numbers there is always an rational number right these are the things uh, i have skipped proofs in detail but i have given here and we have tried to explain the key points right we'll uh, see other things in next class okay